Hello everyone, and in this video, we are going to break down the CVE 2025-4123. Some of you might know about this, but some of you don't. But even if you know, I think it's really important for you to watch this video because I'm going to break everything step by step of how this actually happened and how it lead to account takeover. So this was found in the Grafana, a critical vulnerability that chains open redirects, SSRF, and stored accesses to achieve full account takeover. And if the image renderer plugin is enabled, it can even leak cloud credentials. So let's see how this works. The first vulnerability here, which is the entry point of this whole exploit, is open redirect. Oh, and some of you, if you don't know what Grafana is, Grafana is open source analytics platform and it is built in Go. It visualizes data from sources like Prometheus. Okay, back to open redirect. If you don't really know what open redirect is, you can watch my video from the I button. But if you know, then keep watching this. Okay, so the open redirect vulnerability was found in the static handler function. So this handles requests for static files. Basically, it decides whether to serve a file or redirect based on the URL path, the user request. But the problem here is how this function is handling path resolution. For example, if you request a directory path like sending a get request to slash public slash build but don't include a trailing slash the static handler responds with a redirect for example it will say 302 found and the location slash public slash build and another forward slash so this is actually a normal behavior for static file servers but if an attacker crafts a pod like slash public slash dot dot slash and then attacker.com slash and the rest of the payload but after you send this request the redirect becomes slash attacker.com slash question mark slash order slash and the rest of the payload now the attacker.com gets interpreted by the browser as protocol relative because of the two forward slashes so the user is redirected to attacker.com now it must be sounding a little bit weird but let me show you this blog we're gonna switch between these two blogs or more so you can understand this better okay so he's the one who found this bug and he explained everything in a really good way in this blog that covers pretty much everything so we are going to look into it and understand what's going on let me scroll so there are two code blocks that i want to show you the first one is this this function the static handler function that we discussed already which basically used to serve files from the local folder and we also have this file system dot open that basically tries to open a folder or file from the disk based on the path okay now there is another code block if i go down another function that is is there now is there a function is responsible for redirecting the user to the particular folders path Okay, let's try to understand what's actually happening over here in this payload. As we can see, we have added attacker.com forward slash and a question mark. So what happens when you pass this input file system dot open is going to take that and it's going to treat the question mark as just a normal character, like part of a folder name. So this payload becomes empty and if it's empty means it resolves to real directory which is the static files slash now once this one is resolved there's another function where this input is being passed to which is is there now when this function sees that question mark it sees it as the start of a query parameter because that's the job of the question mark right it is used to add query parameters so it thinks okay it's a query parameters and it stops at that point and the redirect becomes this so this is not treated as a redirect to an external attacker site basically the file system thinks it's a folder and resolves it normally but the redirect logic which is this logic gets confused and sends the user to attacker.com 
basically he's trying to abuse the mismatch between the file path logic and url logic over here i try to explain it in a very easy way hope this makes sense or give you a bit more context and of course you can read this blog this will make even more sense after you read it i'll provide the link in the description so he explained his analysis how he found out the resultant payload by trying multiple things as you can see he added two forward slashes which is which indicates a protocol relative url means https and this one does the same so he can use this at part of the payload and as you can see he mentioned this file system that open that resolves to valid directory it's triggering in the isdir flow as you can see he talked about the inconsistency that happened here so i basically summarized you all of this in a really easy way so as you can see this was the final payload over here so when http redirect resolves the path it removes the slash public part which is the prefix and this is the resultant and here we have a nice diagram which explains this as well so first you have this particular payload you can also url encode it and then the static handler takes this decode the question mark which is person tf and then this get passed to file system dot open which tries to open it and because it sees it as empty as i mentioned before it's just going to resolve the current directory but when this is passed to http redirect it's going to stop right there at the question mark and it's going to redirect the user to attacker.com instead. I hope the open redirect scenario is making sense to you right now. Now let's talk about how we can chain two more vulnerabilities here with this. So first one we have here is full read SSRF. So the open redirect doesn't have any serious security impact by itself. So he needed to chain it with another functionality. And Grafana has this endpoint called slash render, which is used to generate images based on the provided path. Okay, so this render path uses a headless browser like Chromium to generate screenshots of internal Grafana pages, but it only accepts internal relative pods like um slash b slash dashboard one two three slash home something like that whatever that is internal and it does not accept external urls or any absolute urls such as https slash slash google.com or amazon.com so it won't accept it but what if i use the open redirect i found to redirect to an internal service first i tried to load google.es with this payload so we have slash render slash public dot dot so this payload actually has double url encoded characters like forward slash and backward slash so in the open redirect he added this payload this looks like a relative path but because of the double encoded characters grafana render internally redirects the user to google dot uh, yes right yeah okay so we can see the redirect over here then i set up an internal service that's inaccessible from the outside and i tried loading the local host on port 1234 so again with the same payload but with a different host and port so as you can see again it is redirecting he used open redirect to bypass the restriction over here and that led to ssrf really amazing and now we have the last one that is xss more like stored xss i think so a significant part of grafana client side code allows client side path traversal for example when you load slash invite one in the browser the javascript makes a request to slash api slash user slash invite slash one okay so we have this slash api slash user uh before this path to retrieve the invite information however if you load something like this we're noticing this pattern every time you're adding this path traversal payloads to get something out of it the javascript resolves the path traversal and ends up loading slash route okay so this is the 
diagram we have here this is the url slash invite and then the encoded form of forward slash person to f and then route so when this uh, path is sent to slash route endpoint it resolves it and do something with this slash route info so this creates a perfect scenario to force the javascript to load the open redirect which in turn fetches specially crafted json from the server as you can see he's using the open redirect everywhere to chain multiple vulnerabilities that's why i said open redirect is the entry point in this cve let's see what happens next loading a malicious javascript file okay you can use plugin app slash explorer to load and manage a plugin app. The JavaScript of this functionality extracts plugin app name from the URL and uses it to request plugin information from this endpoint. Now this endpoint plugin app slash settings one file looks like this. We have the name, type, ID, if it's enabled or not, and some other stuff like base URL and author name, whoever created the plugin this endpoint loads the file and executes the javascript provided in the module parameter so point to be noted in this json file we have this module which fetches and executes the js file in the front end that's why he added this comment as well means if you control the js you control what gets executed for example you can try some stuff over here i think you're getting the point let's scroll down so basically, if I set up my own server with all the necessary JS and JSON files, basically trying to create your own plugin, you need to just host a JSON file like this. So name, type, add everything stuff, and then and in the module, add a malicious JS file, which contains our access payload, right? Let's move on and load this route, okay? So again, we have our payload with the path traversal tricks, double dots and forward slash encoded form, then public, the endpoint we saw earlier, and then attacker.com, and then some more double encoded characters. And this is the result. Accesses is popping in the browser. The malicious JavaScript file gets executed, allowing me to change the victim's email and reset their password, leading to account takeover. So here we have a summary in this diagram. I like how he added all these little diagrams. It's really nice. So when Grafana tries to fetch the JS file from this particular URL by sending a GET request to it, and that JS file contains our access payload, it gets executed in the client side. So as you can see, it says 302 redirect, which redirects to attacker.com. And attacker.com has this malicious.js file, which executes the access. I love reading this kind of blogs, how they chain everything to get the exploit done. It's really cool to read such blogs. And it's really inspiring as well okay that wraps it up i hope you guys enjoyed watching this video i really had so much fun researching about it and reading about it so i really thought to talk about it as well in my video okay guys there is one more thing that i wanted to mention that i'll be uploading more exclusive blogs on my medium i took a little break from a medium and i was uploading a few blogs on my website itself but i'm thinking to add more in medium so the blogs i'll be writing will be from my personal notes itself or from my experience of bug bounty and pen test so don't forget to follow me there and subscribe to my email notifications so you will know every time i upload a blog so i recently uploaded these two blogs which is also exclusive and I definitely recommend you to check that out because these two again are from my personal notes. Also, thanks for your response on my last video on uncommon HTTP headers. That was really amazing to see. Okay, guys, that's it for today. Thank you so much and I'll see you in the next one.